irgendwas. Mystery is made possible by a grant from Mobile Corporation. Good evening, and welcome to a very special night of mystery. I'm Vincent Price. Tonight marks the return of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's world-famous consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes. Remarks such as, don't ask me, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, show just how easily we have accepted Holmes as part of our daily lives. Almost from his first appearance in 1887, a study in Scarlet, the great detective had an immediate appeal, and it's gratifying to see that today's young people appreciate him even as their fathers and their grandfathers did. Sherlock Holmes has been the subject of innumerable films, stage plays, television serials, radio broadcasts, records, advertisements, games, and even crossword puzzles. So it's somewhat of an understatement when Ellery Queen tells us that more has been written about Sherlock Holmes than about any other character in fiction, and more has been written about Holmes by others than by Conan Doyle himself. And yet, for all the material written about this famous man, we still know very little of his background. Holmes remarked that his ancestors were country squires, and that he himself was the grandson of a sister of the French artist Vernet. He reminds us tonight that art in the blood is liable to take the strangest forms. But Holmes was always reticent about his past, and even to Watson he would not talk about his relations or his early life. So you can imagine the good doctor's surprise tonight when Holmes introduces his brother Mycroft in the adventure of the Greek interpreter. <laughs> Nasty little toy. There's no question about Sherlock Holmes's continuing popularity. People who cannot read a word of English know his name and thousands write each year to his Baker Street address. Sue Brown, Sherlock's secretary, answers an average of 20 letters a week, written to Holmes at 221B Baker Street, 80% of them from the United States. Mostly, they ask detailed questions about the books. What kind of a pipe did he smoke? Where were his hats made? And although he ate game, beef, and eggs, how could he really be an Englishman if he never drank or eight fish. But other letters contain more personal appeals. Can Mr. Holmes help with missing pets or stolen money or missing persons? Miss Brown says that there were quite a lot of interesting requests during the Watergate business. She answers most of the letters with a polite, as Mr. Holmes is now over 130 years old and retired to Sussex to keep bees. He regretfully cannot help with this particular problem. Miss Brown's employer, the current owner of the building, which now stands at 221B Baker Street, has stamped 221B on a number of bricks 
saved from the rubble after a recent renovation. He sells them 3,000 so far for charity at $3.50 each. One Texas builder who bought 500 of them puts one into each fireplace of each house that he builds. Each year, the staff at 221D prepares itself to receive hundreds of loyal fans' birthday greetings to their favorite detective. Holmes' birthday, by the way, is January 8th, so you still have time to send a card. Meanwhile, I know that you'll want to join me next week on Mystery, when Sherlock Holmes comes to the aid of a young doctor and finds that the new science of psychotherapy may not provide all the clues necessary to solve the adventure of the resident patient. Until then, for Mystery, I'm Vincent Price. Good night. Possible by a grant from Mobile Corporation.